Thank you for coming, everybody, to the official launch of Captain Arctic Survey 2010, which is building on the work of 2009. As the clip suggests, it's a two-part program involving a team of explorers out on the sea ice making a long-range, extensive survey, um, taking samples of water from underneath the sea ice, and separately but linked is an ice base with a team of international scientists who we are using our polar skills to support in technical terms to enable them to do an intensive localized survey in, on the coastal margins of the Arctic Ocean. Now, what is the significance of this program in general terms? Well, the reason we put this very ambitious program of pioneering science together is because the Arctic Ocean is particularly vulnerable to uh, the process of acidification. Cold water absorbs carbon dioxide more readily uh, than what you might call normally uh, temperatured uh, upper layers of the ocean. And so we can expect a more acidic Arctic Ocean than elsewhere, more acidic waters in the Arctic than elsewhere. It is, if you like, this whole process of acidification is um, it's the other carbon problem. We all know about rising levels of CO2 in the atmosphere, which is leading to a greenhousing effect, creating a warmer planet. But what is less talked about and less known about, it's very much an emerging science, as you will hear from Dr. Carol Turley shortly, um, is this process of acidification, which is it's all very well for the oceans to absorb carbon dioxide and to some extent mitigate some of the um, negative effects of these increasing emissions but the downside is that it's becoming more acidic. I see that this program of work, hugely exciting, hugely ambitious, with its hazards, um, is classic modern phase exploration. In the old days, the explorers that we know and love were involved with mapping the major surface features of our planet, the mountain ranges, the river systems, the coastlines, the ice sheets. We now know, thanks to their efforts largely, where everything is. What we are now involved with, uh, within the exploration community and more broadly the scientific community, is understanding how the natural world works. Because if we're serious about managing our relationship better with the natural world, it is imperative that we understand how it works. And that's what this project, this survey, uh, this exploration is focused on. Evidence-led, better understanding of a particular aspect of the global or Earth system. Behind me, you can see, I can handily do a puppet show here. Um, <clears throat> the Explor Explorer team will be setting off um, at about 85 degrees north and heading northwards, as I say, measuring the thickness of the sea ice as they go, following on from the work that we did in the, with the Captain Arctic Survey 2009, and also collecting water samples um, as they go, which will be brought back and analysed um, after the project. The uh, second um, element of the programme is here on Elif Ringnes Island, part of the Queen Elizabeth Islands, above mainland Canada, on the, on the coastline of the Arctic Ocean itself, and there we have um, uh, up to uh, 15 scientists over the 50-plus days doing their work um, in the immediate vicinity. Last year, we played our part with the survey in contributing towards understanding better um, how long before we lost the lid on the top of the Arctic Ocean, on the top of the planet, this sea ice cover. And it was revealed uh, well, that um, we're probably looking at about the order of 20 years before, the, in the summer times, we find ourselves with an entirely ice-free ocean. That has implications for this process of ocean acidification because, of, of course, it's now exposing increasingly large areas of um, open water um, in the Arctic to this process. Um, I just want to finish by saying that the reason I say this is so ambitious 
It's not only because we're innate, we're, through the survey, we're facilitating science that might not otherwise be taking place, um, but, and therefore advancing scientific understanding in an area of emerging interest, but there is a huge focus on communicating the work that we're doing, and more particularly the science and, and, and the related, the relevance of acidification to the wider world. And to give you an idea, last year, we reached, um, I think the technical term is that, that we generated 3.3 uh, um, billion opportunities for people to watch on TV, hear on the radio, or read in newspapers and magazines. In over 40 countries, um, the unfolding scientific story of the sea ice going. People don't go there. People don't see it, for the most part. They don't see. They don't see the Arctic Ocean and its sea ice. They don't experience it. And of course, the, unless they are told about it, therefore, how can they possibly know what's going on? That is our role. That is classically what explorers do. Uh, they they go to places that others cannot reach. They secure information that others cannot acquire, but critically, they communicate what it is that they found. Otherwise, they're tourists. And uh, so a, 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 a big part of what we do is communicate the unfolding scientific story. On that note, I'd just like to um, finish my section by um, um, letting us hear a few words from the explorers themselves. Now, I'm not going to be going up onto the Arctic Ocean um, this year. I'm going to be masterminding the project because of its scale of ambition and complexities back in the UK. It's the first time we've done such a complex program, and um, the explorer team is being led by Anne Daniels, um, accompanied by Martin Hartley and Charlie Payton, all of whom are extremely experienced CI surface travelers. And I think the point is, that what explorers can do, who've got that, the experience and the skills, is to use those to acquire information that cannot be got by any other means. So these were their um, final words as they set off um, up to Resolute. They have, now re they have now actually arrived in Resolute Bay at the polar base. Thanks.